Hello everybody and welcome to Vector Twist, the place where you can learn all about Adobe Illustrator. My name is Simona and I'm here to show you that learning it is easier than you think. In this video tutorial I would like to show you how you can create a paper airplane in Illustrator. I'm working with Illustrator CC but it doesn't matter what version you have, you can follow along. Now here you can see I have a sketch of a paper airplane. This will help us to actually create our main shapes. So let's get started. So for my base shape, I would like to set it to a red. So I'll choose this one here. And then I'm going to choose the pen tool. We're just going to create straight lines. So I'm just following along of the outline of our paper plane here. And then at the end, we're going to close it. Of course, now we can't see what's happening. So let me just set the opacity down so I can still see my sketch. Now with the pen tool again, I'm going to choose actually a gradient that I've already created. And it's a simple gradient going from white to a very light gray. I'm going to create the other shapes here and I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to deselect the shape, create another shape on the other side with the same gradient. But of course I have to change the gradient. It's going now from dark to light, but we actually need the opposite. So I'm going to turn on the gradient annotator. You can do this by pressing G on the keyboard. And then when you see the crosshair here, you can just drag it. Same thing I'm going to do to the other side. Now I'm going to continue to create some shapes. We need another shape here in the middle. And it's again a gradient. But of course, it doesn't need to be dark on top of here. It needs to be dark more down into the middle. So I choose the gradient annotator again. And I place it. Sometimes you have to play around a little bit. I think this one looks actually pretty good. You can also use the gradient annotator to move the gradient sliders around. So maybe we want to have it actually like this. You can see that my shadow is a little bit stronger and just by moving those sliders around. Next, we're going to use a red gradient. We're going to use this gradient for these shapes of the paper plane here. So I'm going to set it like this. And of course, I need to use the gradient annotator again and actually place it to the outside. Next shape on the other side, I'm going to close it and of course use the gradient annotator to place it. Now we just need a few more shapes. Now we need one more shape here in the middle. So let's create this shape with the pen tool. And of course it will be filled with a red gradient as well. And we have to play with the positioning of our gradient. You can always play around with it later. And then we have to move it underneath our white shape. And now we can actually select our base shape and set the opacity back to 100%. Select the base shape and set it to a lighter color. Now it is the same color as our top shape here and things are blending in. So I might just change it by double clicking on my color picker here. And then when I've set it into the brightness, I can just move those slider down just a little bit. And as you can see, now we have a little bit of a difference. Not much, but just enough. Now we have to actually add some highlights and shadows. So the first thing we want to do is actually create a shadow underneath this white shape here. And all we have to do is, again, use the pen tool. But this time we want to set actually a gradient that has transparency. I've already created one, so let me show you here. This gradient goes from black, 100% opacity, and the next stop is black as well, but set to 0% opacity. After that, we have to play with the angle a little bit, but let's create the shape first. So I choose the pen tool, and then I create a triangle. Just along the edge here, then I'm going to set the angle to about 150, maybe even more, 156 degrees. Now, of course, you have to place it underneath the white shape. So what we can do is select the white shape and move it all the way to the top. We actually have to tweak our gradient a little bit. Now let's say we set it to 156 degrees, but again, you can't see anything here. So if I move it around, the whole gradient annotator is way too long. So we just grab it here and shorten it and then move it inwards. And as you can see, now we're getting actually the fall off from the black to the transparency. Now if I deselect it and I zoom out, you can see now it gives us the illusion of a shadow. Now, of course, we want to do the same thing to the other side as well. So I'll select it, I choose the pen tool, and then I'm going to create another small triangle. Same way I did on the other side. Of course, I have to change the angle and I have to place it and then I'll move it in a little bit until I see my shadow appearing. This takes some tweaking and getting used to, but once you've done it a few times, you get the hang of it. And again, we need to change 
the position of the top one and bring it all the way to the top. We might want to actually increase our shape a little bit so we have a little bit more of a shadow. As you can see now, here's our shadow. Again, we can tweak it and pull in the transparency slider a little bit, bring the other one to the front, and you can see that we're getting a stronger shadow. Now if I zoom out, you can see now that we have shadows on both sides. Of course we need a shadow for here too, so let's create that right away. Again, we have the transparent gradient still selected, and then we're going to create our small triangle. We'll change stuff around a little bit with the gradient annotator, and maybe play with the angle to see what works better, pull things in, and maybe increase the size of our triangle a tad. So now let's zoom out again, and we need a little bit more tweaking here, so maybe we actually have to create another point, place it, so we can stretch out our rectangle. And of course, this shape has to be on top. Now if I zoom out, you can see that we have now placed our shadows, and now what is left, we have to actually place some highlights. Now we need a highlight along these edges here. So what we can actually do is, we can just create a path. So let me turn off the fill, set the stroke to a light orange, use the pen tool, and create a line. Then we do the same thing on the other side, and now you can see it looks like we actually have some highlights. And of course those lines have to be underneath the shadows, so if you zoom in, you can see if we select both of them, move them top, and move those on top as well, and then we zoom out, we can see that we have some highlights here. If you think you need a lighter highlight, just select the line, and then let's select a lighter color, and we can bring down the saturation a little bit. We'll set this to the other side as well. And now here's the paper plane. Now let me turn off the sketched layer, and let me see what's happening here. We want to make sure that all the points are aligned together. So what we can do is select all the points with the direct selection tool, and then go to Object, Path, Average, and then in the pop-up we're going to select both, and then click OK. The same we want to do down here, and then I click OK. And then I'm going to set the stroke of this particular one to white, 0 0.25 points, and I want to make sure that it's aligned to the outside. The same I do on the other side, aligned on the outside. And then we have one more last thing to do, and that is actually creating a drop shadow. Now for this we want to select our base shape. So I'm going to select my base shape, which is this one here. Then I'm going to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and I have the values of opacity set to 59%, the X offset is minus two points, and the Y offset is seven points. Blur is set to seven points as well. So if I check the preview, and then I press OK. And here's our paper plane. Now there's one thing I've done to our paper plane here. I've added a background. So let me show you. Here on this particular layer on the bottom, I've created a radial gradient background, and I set the highlight to be on the left side of our paper plane. And this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial how to create a paper airplane in Adobe Illustrator. Remember to subscribe to my channel here, and also check out VectorTwist.com. I'll see you next time.